Hey people, how are you doing? Reminding you it's that time again of our show Insta. I hope you were excited as I am excited. I'm always excited when I'm presenting this show. I hope you are excited when you're watching the show. Well, Insta is a show that brings to you everything that is related to fashion, all the trends, all the look tip, the look tip to keep you up to date what is happening in the fashion world, to help you get to know what to dress, what to match with your watch, what to match with your clothes, every single detail. Well, before we always say much, we we'll always say a very big thank you for those of you who keep watching the show, either in the country or outside the country. Thank you so much for watching the show. Keep watching the show because this is a show that you do not have to miss. Well, before we say much, we we'll hit it up with the coming ups, then we'll be right back. Coming up next, we have the smash look with Viola Davis who stole the show at the Oscars in a beautiful Armani prime gown. And that will be followed up with an interview we had with Hervé, a random comedian who told us more on how his career all started and many more on him that we didn't know. And that will be preceded with a look tip where we shall talk about five ways to wear jeans at office and still look professional. And that will end with the current trends and fashion shows that have been happening in the fashion world. And here we're talking about the Oscars that happened over the past weekend. As usual, my fashionistas, what do we always start off with? We start off with a smash look, and our smash look of this week is the beautiful Viola Davis. This is an actress. She looked ravishing at the Oscars in a beautiful red gown. This lady is amazing when it comes to acting, but this time around, she showed us where her fashion stance could reach. Well, she looked so ravishing in an Armani Prime red long gown dress. And today, she's our smash look because she looked beautiful. Let's see her as our smash look of this week. And our smash look of this week is the gorgeous Viola Davis. Fans supporting actress nominee Viola Davis has never been shy about color. From the royal blue Jenny Park Clam dress she wore to this year's BAFTA's awards to the canary yellow Michael Kors look she wore at last year's SAG award to the magnetan Christian flock she donated to the incense pre-Oscars party earlier this week. The star's red carpet decision for the award session has been nothing short of the kaleidoscopic. But tonight in a costume scarlet red Armani gown, the star broke out in a new defining shirt. The off-the-shoulder flow length design which gathered at the neck was just prismatic jolly that the evening needed. Davis stood out from her Hollywood peers who had leaned towards darkly romantic hues and champagne tones. The body skimming stilluated was completed by her sleek and rose shape pixie cut which lent the seasoned actress a cool and refined edge with a substole natural glow to her beauty. Davis let the power of the gown's color remain the focal point tonight. Indeed, her only accessory were a decent bracelet and a metallic clutch. And given that she's up for one of the top owners at the ceremony, no doubt eyes will be on the attention-grabbing star. Born August 11, 1965, Viola is an American actress and producer she's the only black woman to be nominated for the three academic award winning one and is the only black actress or actor to win the triple crown of acting in 2002 she was listened by the time as one of the 100 most influential people in the world after graduation from the jewel school in 1993 davis began her career on stage and won an award in 1999 for her performances as ruby marklum in the Every day is Ruby. She played supporting and minor roles in several films and television series in the late 1990 and earlier 2000, including the film Kate and Leopard in 2001 and Far From Heaven in 2002, and the television series Law and Order Special Victim Unit in 2001. She wore the Tony Award for the Best Featured Actress in a Playing for a role as Tonya in the original production of The King Held. Davis film breakthrough came in 2008 when her her supporting role in the drama Doubt earned her several nominees including the Golden Globe and the SAG Award. As usual, fashionistas, as you guys already know, we always proceed our show with the interview. And our interviewer of this week, it's a surprise. I don't want to say about the interviewer and what he does or what she does. It's going to be a surprise to you. And let's see our interviewer with our surprise. So Hervé, why did you choose comedy as a career? Did comedy find you or you found it? It came by accident. Mm. It, was, it was an accident actually. I was doing theater mm. with Isho, mm. Isho Art Center. Before that, I was a dancer, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, I used to be a dancer with a thing called Cool Family. <laughs> a, a long time ago. I was probably 16 or 17, a very long time ago actually. So after that, after the dancing part, I went to school and a year and a half after that I was bored of school so I got out 
I quit school. That was a terrible move. I quit. Don't do that at home. Like, <laughs> don't try this at home. So I, I, I really wanted to do art, but I didn't know how or who to contact or where to go. So luckily, you know how things fall in place by themselves. I got in touch with Carol Carimera, who was starting Isho. I did the casting and the workshops, and then she hired me. So tell me about your first time on stage. It was, it was fun because we we weren't taking ourselves seriously. Like it was ne never like. Because I, I remember at some point, but the, the time that I realized it was actually serious, I did a thing called uh, Nmet Comedy Club Live. It was a, it was a long time ago. It was hosted by uh, Gaetano, the big yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah the yeah. big brother winner of, uh, from which year I can't remember. Yeah, from Uganda. And and while they're doing the file, they asked me, "What is your stage name?" And I realized I didn't have any. That, that's how unserious it was for us. Like, we didn't realize how far it could go. So the first time, it was, like I said, at home, a bunch of boys having fun, and the crowd happens to be there. We started freaking out, because that, that was like 50 people, then 100 people, then 600 people. That's when I started getting scared. I was like, oh, this, this is serious now. So when you start performing every month for 600, 700, 800 people, we once did... 900 people at Serena, 1,200 at KCT, the rooftop. That's when you're like, whoa, okay, things are getting serious. This is serious now. Let's stop joking now. Exactly. And now with the Com Factory, every week, we, like, now it's a steady job. Like, we, we have to rehearse constantly because every week comes with new material. So what is your best part of being a comedian? It's the feeling you get when you have... 500 or 1,000 or 3,000, it got to 5,000 in Kinshasa, 5,000 people laughing. It's, I cannot describe to you this feeling, it's, you have to be there to believe it, like you, you get on stage, you say something, and then people just laugh, and they laugh for like 5, 10 seconds, and at that moment, you're the happiest person alive. It's, it's a drug, actually. You don't want it to end. You just want to go on and on. If they don't stop you, you can do it for an hour because they, cause they, they joke with you. It's never like one-sided. They actually joke with you. They, you can tell who's doing what. They react with you. Sometimes the show stops and you're having a conversation. And it can go on forever. So that's, that's to, like, not, okay, forget about 5,000 people. Somebody laughing, a, a child laughing. You know how you feel when you, when you laugh and you don't know what's happening, but you keep, like, because it's contagious. Yes, okay. Now imagine 5,000. It's, it's huge. It's, uh, you get goosebumps. Yeah, it's intense. Do you write your own routines? Yes, mostly. And, uh, but you, when you present it to the rest of the team, each one of them has his way of giving advice, and you take notes, and you rework it for it to be ready for the stage. So we actually look at, uh, at um, we, we look at it as if we were the audience. So we're like the test audience for somebody. So Babu goes in front, he does his thing. And if I laugh, I already know the routine, I read it. But if he says it and I laugh, then it's a good one. Because the element of surprise has been removed. So if I can, it's like a song. If you can listen to it once, twice, and still love it, the song is good. There's a song you listen once, the second time you're like, ah, this one I can't stand anymore. So the, it's the same thing with a routine or, or a joke or, 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 or a punchline. If the, if the timing of the punchline is good, then the show is perfect. Where do you get your material from? Everyday life. If it makes me laugh, then I will find a way to tell it to someone else. Because by the time I'm telling the story, I'm just telling a story, and the story happens to be funny. I'm not trying to make you laugh. I'm just saying, it's like me coming to you as I'm like, you will never believe what happened to me today. And I want people to go, what happened? Tell me. Like, that's, that's how you connect with them. So if it makes me laugh, then I know how to make it funny. Also, if it's silly, if, if, if somebody said something stupid, I will tear him down. Like, I, I can't, I, I can't let it go. Like, really, you cannot let it go. So it's a, it's a mix of the two, actually. It's, um, and, and the more, 
it's mean when I say that. It's really mean. But you know the funniest thing is to me? Somebody falling. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Like yeah, okay, somebody falling. You know why? Because no, I, I want to know why it makes me laugh. So I, I re-observed <laughs> when people fall. And, and this is when I realized. This is you standing, okay? This is you flat on the ground. There's a space here, a 45 degree angle, where you know you're falling and you cannot stop it anymore. It's done, you're falling. You have all the facial expressions, all of them at the same time. For like half a second, it's the funniest thing ever. Because you have pain and shame and anticipation and fear, all of them at the same time, and you know you're going down. I, I cannot stop laughing. Every time I remember, I cannot stop laughing. So yeah, so comedy, it's, yeah, it's pain and timing. So what happens when you make a joke and people don't laugh about it? <laughs> Yo, okay. It, it, this has happened a long time. Yes. Here's the key. People don't need to know. It's easier if people don't know where your punchline is. If they didn't laugh, then they won't find out. What kills you is when you go da 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 punchline da 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 punch no she goes Phew. if you happen to laugh you laugh but when you begin you don't know that so sometimes they don't laugh and throughout throughout the entire the entire thing because the first time that they don't laugh it kills you. So you spiral down into this thing where your head is like, oh my God, I'm not funny, this is not funny. And, and you lose your text and, and it goes on and on and on until the end and you've, you, you're so scared you want the stage to open itself and you just, and you wish to have, you know this pen in, in I don't know if it's a pen, in Men in Black, where you stand in front of someone and you go, Chh, so they can forget what happened. That's what you want at that point, it's horrible. Mine was, 15 minutes on stage, 15 minutes. It's even in the papers, it was in Uganda. They wrote it in the papers. 15 minutes on stage, it felt like an hour. The most, like this is the most horrible time I've ever had on stage, ever. And I swear it will never happen again. <laughs> and I know it will, it will. Sometimes you're not in shape. You're just not in shape, that's all, yeah. What are the five things you can't live without? Five things that I cannot live without my headphones because we, we, I travel a lot headphones because I'm constantly listening to music I read a lot so books I already have a book on me somewhere either in my suitcase in my bag somewhere or in my room I have a, like a stack of books I need uh, something that I can't live without my my friends actually like the people I have very few friends so I'm very picky with those because I have been uh, messed up with before. So I have very few, I have very uh, a small circle that, you know, people that you consider your family, like you've known them forever. You can't even remember when, when you met them. It's like they've always been there. So I have, I'm lucky enough to have that. Four would be hmm, something that I can't live without. I have to laugh. I have to be around people who make me laugh. Because most of the time when I'm somewhere, people expect me to make them laugh. And I, every time they ask me, I tell them I am off duty. Yeah, but that's why I cannot be funny all the time. Like I have my moments when I'm down, when I'm depressed, when I'm angry, why not? Could you say a very last message to the young people, mostly young generation who are watching you and they want to do the same career as what you do? You, if you, I, I don't care what you want to do. I don't care if it's comedy, I don't care if it's business, I don't care. Well, any kind of dream or project you have in life, just jump. Just do it. Nobody, nobody will give it to you. Nobody will give you a second chance. Nobody is waiting for you to achieve it. Actually, a lot of people are waiting for you to fail. But if it's in your guts, if it's in your heart, just do it. Start the work, start the... Um, I hate to be tacky or... or cocky like that when I start quoting other people. Um, um, a million miles journey starts with a single step. That's what I'm looking for. So yeah, just, just go ahead and do it. Like I never thought I'll be where I am today and thank God I am. I still have millions of other crazy projects in my head, but it started somewhere. It started somewhere. So whoever you are, whatever you are, you have no excuse. Just do it. Yeah.
That's thank that. You. And we love you very much. <laughs> and thank you for the support. Okay. Call me the night. As usual, fashionists as well as proceed our show with a look tip. And our look tip of this week, we're going to talk about something totally different. Last time we spoke about ladies, how to braid their hair, how to style their hair, different styles that are trending in the year 2017. But this time we're going back to the guys. And we're going to talk about five ways to wear your jeans in a professional way and still look professional. In office and still look professional. Well, guys have troubles while wearing their jeans. They're like, I can't wear my jeans at work because they're so uh, casual. But you know, you can still wear your jeans and look so professional well let's find out more about ways to wear jeans in office and still look professional casual Friday has a lot to answer for in today's fluid and creative business environment working and socializing often happens at the same time or they can certainly sangrate from one to another we've recently had people using the phrase pleasure a portmanteau of business and leisure then crink this brave new office word can present dilemmas for the modern working man such as can i climb that dinner back on expenses and what should i wear we'll leave you to the whistle with a former conundrum but as for the late but as for the later would like to present the business case for dinner Many professional men, particularly those north of 40, are mostly comfortable wearing a suit to work. It is a uniform of sorts, requiring, li requiring little mental session beyond picking out the right tie. It is when they can encourage to dress down and lose an up, whether for the casual Friday or a company away day. That panic sets in. No one wants to be stiff in a suit when everyone else is dressed more informally. The wrong jeans, otherwise known as dad's jeans or in the States Obama's jeans, can quickly make someone look as dated as they would carrying a flip for a generation that has grown up with digital fluency as birthright and jeans in office as a default set, the challenge lies in dressing them up enough to make them suitable for the working week this usually means choosing dark jeans with minimal wash or no distressing Let's assemble five different denim as a look that you can dress up down as your good luck with those expenses as you guys already know, we can't finish our show without talking about the trends, what has been happening in the fashion world or event. But this time around, we're going to talk about the Oscars. Last time we spoke about Miss Rwanda. The other time we talked about the Grammy. But this time we're talking about the Oscars. The Oscars were amazing. And of course, we won't stop talking about the red carpet. Every lady who was there looked amazing in beautiful gowns, guys in tuxedos. It's mostly fashionable, like people are receiving their words in beautiful gowns, you know, everything, every single detail about this show was just amazing. Well, let's see the Oscars with the trends. The 89th Academic Award Ceremony presented by the Academic of Motion Pictures, Art and Science, MPAS, honored the best film of the 2016 and took place on February 26, 2017 at the Dombri Theatre in Hollywood, Los Angeles, California at 5.30 p.m. During the ceremony, MPAS presented Academic Award commonly referred to the Oscars in the 24 category. The ceremony televisioned in the United States by the ABC was produced by Michael DeLuck and Jennifer Todd and directed by Glue Wiss. And comedian Jamie Killam hosted the ceremony for the first time. In related event, the Academic held its 8th annual Governor's Award Ceremony at the Grand Ballroom of the Hollywood and Highland Center in November 12, 2016. On February 11, 2017, in the ceremony at the Beverly Hills Wish Hotel in Beverly Hills, California, the Academic Science and Technical Award were presented by a host, John Cho and Leslie Mann. Moonland won the three awards, including Best Picture and La La Land won the most award of the ceremony. Moonlight won three awards, including Best Picture and Nella Land won the most award of the ceremony with six after receiving a record tying 14 nominees. In an a presented event for the history of the Oscars, La La Land was incorrectly announced as the best picture before Moonlight was clarified to be the winner. Moonlight became the first film with an all-black cast and the first LGBT film to win Best Picture. 
Well, my fashionistas, that is the show we had for you. We're not going to forget to say a very, very big thank you to Grazia Apartments for always giving us the beautiful venue. You guys will keep watching the show, my entire team, my viewers. If you forgot to watch the show today, you know you can still catch up the show at 6.15 on Saturday. If you failed to watch the show on Saturday, you know you can still go on our YouTube channel by typing in style by Kawagiri Christelle. For more comments and suggestions and more that you want to see on the show, you can still follow us on our Facebook by typing in style by Kawagiri Christelle. Well, that is the show we had for you. Till next time. Bye-bye.